Automatic pipettes are routinely used in the laboratory for accurate and precise handling of small quantities of liquids, typically volumes less than 1 mil. Automatic pipettes work by air displacement. When the plunger is depressed, a shaft inside the barrel of the pipette is pushed forward, displacing a precise amount of air from within the barrel. The tip of the pipette can now be placed in the solution, and upon a gentle release of the plunger, a precise volume of the solution is drawn into the pipette tip. Once the solution is in the pipette tip, it can then be dispensed by depression of the plunger again. Each pipette has the maximum and minimum volume in microliters it can be used for printed on the body of the pipette. There is also a window which indicates what volume in microliters a pipette is currently set to. This pipette is set to 1000 microliters or 1 mil. The pipette is controlled by the plunger, which also doubles as a volume control. Behind the plunger, there is a tip ejector, which is used for ejecting the disposable plastic tips from the end of the pipette shaft. Automatic pipettes are manufactured to cover a number of different volume ranges. Typically, the pipettes you will use will be 0.5 to 10 microliters, 10 to 100 microliters, and 100 to 1000 microliters. They are normally referred to by the maximum volume they dispense. For instance, 10 microliters, 100 microliters, or 1000 microliter pipettes. Although the pipettes are color coded, it is best to check the volume range printed on the pipette before you begin pipetting. It is important to choose a pipette where the volume you wish to pipette is close to the maximum range for that particular pipette. This is because the percentage error for a pipette is greater the smaller the volume you wish to pipette. For example, it is more accurate to use a 100 microliter pipette for dispensing 100 microliters than to use a 1000 microliter pipette. The volume of the pipette can be set by rotating the plunger clockwise for decreasing the volume and anti-clockwise for increasing the volume. It is very important not to attempt to wind the volume past the maximum or minimum volume for the pipette. The volume here has been set to 650 microliters. Can you work out the volume set on these pipettes? When using the pipette, first a disposable tip is placed on the end. Different tips are used for the different size pipettes. The 1000 microliter pipette takes the larger blue tip, the 100 microliter takes a yellow tip, and the 10 microliter takes a small clear tip. Tips can be placed on the end either by hand or by using a tip rack. Either way, it is important to ensure that the tip makes an airtight seal when placed on the end. It is very important to always ensure that you use a disposable tip when pipetting. Depending on the tips you use, you may need to adjust the shaft height to a higher or lower position to obtain a good fit. This is achieved by turning the shaft. Once the tip is securely on the end of the pipette, you can begin pipetting. The pipette can be held in your preferred hand with the guard on your index finger and your thumb on the plunger. When you push down on the plunger with your thumb, you should feel there is a natural point of resistance. This is called the first stop. You can push past this point and fully depress the plunger. This is called the second stop. The action of the plunger should feel smooth. If it grates or seems to be stuck, the pipette probably needs cleaning or servicing and you should report it to a technician or to your demonstrator. Before placing the tip into the solution, Depress the plunger down to the first stop. Place the tip into the solution. Ideally, the tip should be just below the surface of the solution. Slowly release the pressure on the plunger to draw the solution into the tip. Now the tip should hold a volume of liquid equal to the volume set on the pipette. Dispense the liquid by placing the tip into the receiving vessel and depress the plunger down past the first stop and all the way down to the second stop to expel all the liquid from the tip. You can continue pipetting if you're using the same solution, 
but if you have finished pipetting or are changing solutions, you can eject the tip into a waste container by depressing the tip ejector. There are a few things to be careful of to ensure accurate and precise pipetting. Always work comfortably. It often helps to have your arms supported and keep your workspace organised with your pipette tips, and pipettes and solutions at hand. You should watch closely when pipetting, particularly for small volumes. Bring the tip and tube close to your eyes. Don't attempt to pipette at arm's length. Pipetting is also a solo activity. Never have your lab partner hold the tube while you are dispensing liquid. Person pipetting needs to be in full control. Always ensure you have a disposable tip on the end of the pipette and it makes a snug fit. When depressing the plunger, make sure that it has a smooth action. Any sticking means it may not be accurate and probably needs servicing. When releasing the plunger, ensure no air enters the tip. Look for air bubbles and don't abruptly lift your thumb from the plunger. This will result in liquid being drawn into the shaft, fouling the pipette. Change tips when you change solutions to avoid cross-contamination.